Hi there, this is Jono from OptiZen AI. In this video, I'm just going to walk through some of our recent releases and updates for OptiZen AI. I'll go through each of them individually in a second, but I'll just talk about them briefly here. So here in our change log on our OptiZenApp.com site, you can see the changes and releases that were made in the last week or so. So the first one is we have released AI update features for collection pages. So now you can run the AI updates just like you would with products for collection pages. And we'll go through how and what you can update in collection pages. The second release is AI features for tag pages. So that works very similar to collection pages. So tag pages, if you're not aware, are, are our sub collection or sub category pages within our Shopify store uh, that we utilize the OptiZen app to be able to edit those pages and create unique sub collection pages. And now along with being able to update them manually, we now have the ability to update them with AI. The third new feature is we've added passing of all page meta and body content for AI reference data. So what that means is uh, up until now, when we've asked the AI with a prompt to update an SEO title, for example, it would go and pass just the SEO title of that particular page and use that data to rewrite depending on the prompt or update depending on the prompt. Now what we've done is uh, added passing for all metadata of the page. So if you're updating the SEO title of a collection page, for example, it will pass all the products on that page, any other um, collection description, H1 page title, et cetera, on that page to use that data in the prompt for the SEO title. And so for anything you update on that particular page, it basically uses and passes the entire page. So you end up with a more accurate and uh, more quality output from the AI. And that's for all AI functions at the moment. So products, collections, and tag pages, and also images. The fourth feature is just a small UI update. When we run a schedule with AI, whether it's products, collections, or uh, tag pages, in the log section, you can see the actual prompts that we used for each schedule. And we've just made that into a collapsible tab, basically, so it doesn't take up too much of the page. So it's just a UI issue, a UI uh, improvement, and just makes it a bit easier to uh, view the page and understand the logs. The fifth improvement we've made is there's now a retry function or retry feature for any failed AI updates. So as we use uh, OpenAI for our AI currently, um, at times, you know, the OpenAI status may go down or there's an issue with OpenAI itself and some schedules will fail. Um, it, it happens rarely, but if, if the OpenAI goes down, that's what happens. Um, or it might just fail one product, for example, out of a batch of 100. And along with the restore all or restore selected feature within your logs, you can now retry any failed products or collections or tags or images. So it just makes the usability a little, uh, it's, it's an improvement on the usability of the actual app itself. And the last one is just some minor improvements for um, the look and feel and the layout of the app within the app itself. Okay, so now I'll go through each of the um, the new updates uh, for AI individually. And the first one we're going to look at is collections. Now I won't go through all the prompts. Uh, we've got some prompts templates ready to go, which you can access. Um, and by the way, uh, AI for collections and tag pages is only available on the pro plan. So uh, products is available on the free plan, uh, but uh, collections and tags are available on the pro plan only. The first thing you need to understand if you're going to create content for your collection pages using the AI feature, obviously you need to have a collection or your collections actually created within Shopify itself. So it needs to be created and saved within Shopify. So here is um, the collection uh, within our sample or demo store. If we just go to the actual front end, this is just a sample store, we can see that um, here's our H1, we've got our SEO title, etc. There's no description at the moment um, above the product grid and there's no content below the product grid here. So we're gonna go now ahead and use the app 
to actually update that uh, with OptiZen AI. So first thing we need to do is, so that just uh, if you haven't used OptiZen before, this is where you would add content manually for the content below the product grid. And then as you would normally in Shopify, you'd add your SEO title, your description, et cetera, within the Shopify section for collections. But if we use OpenAI, it does all that uh, in one, one go. So we're now in uh, OptiZen AI. So we need to come to collections and then we go to listing. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through and update one collection and then we'll update all the sub collections of that collection. But with anything with this app, you can update in bulk as well. So if you wanted to update uh, 10 collections at once, you can do that, but we're just going to update one at the moment to show you how it works. So first thing we need to do is search for that collection. We've synced all our data over and we've got our collection here. So we're going to select that and we'll give it a name. And I'm going to use the, the prompts that are in the prompt repository. So everyone has up, uh, access to those. And this is just a JSON prompt. As I mentioned, I'm not going to go through the details of these prompts. I'll do some separate videos on those. So we have our prompt for our tag, uh, SEO title and just just on using uh, templates for collections and tags because tags and collections work essentially the same uh, in the prompt repository if they're titled as tag or collection you can use them because they're the same uh, they work the same if you wanted to create templates on your own you can obviously you've got your your own template settings here you can add your templates in so then you can use them um, without having to add them in uh, each time you use the app uh, but these are actually within the prompt repository. So we've got our SEO title. Uh, now we'll put our H1 page title in. We'll select that to update it. Now we've got our SEO description. We've got our collection description. So this is the content above the product grid. and we'll add the content below the product grid here so here's the other uh, the content that goes below the product grid and our json prompt for that so now all we have to do we've made sure that we've selected update all click proceed and now it'll go through the process of updating that collection and you can see here's our log we go to details and we can see it's in progress uh, this is where i said we have our read more ex expansion tabs to just see what prompts have actually been used. So this is a good reference. If you've got, you know, you're using prompts and testing, uh, you can see what works well here, but you know exactly which prompts you've used for each schedule. So we'll just let that uh, go through the process. And while it's happening, we'll go and update our tags or our tag pages within that actual main collection. Okay, so we come on over to our tags. We'll go to listing. Now, our main collection was uh, rugs. So if we type in rugs and click search, it'll bring back all our sub collection pages for that particular main collection. So we're gonna update these tag pages, all three of them, click next. We'll call it rugs sub collection. And now we simply go through the same process. But what I'm going to do, as you'll see in a second, the very last prompt for the content below the product grid, I'm going to add in some extra information and you don't need to do this. You can just simply use the prompt uh, that's in the prompt repository, or, or obviously you can create your own as well with uh, GPT or Claude or whatever, and just paste it in here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this out and I'm just going to go and grab another prompt. Okay, I've just gone and grabbed my prompt. Actually, I made a mistake. We're going to keep this collection prompt. So the, the content that below goes below the product grid, that content, we're going to keep that just using the template and we're actually going to swap out the collection description above and all of of 
done is create it's using a new prompt but i've asked gpt to add in links to my relevant sub collections within that core collection so if we paste this in we'll just open this up so it's exactly the same prompt it's just been uh, spaced out a little bit when i've asked uh, gpt to cr create it for me so it's the same prompt but then you can see here we've got our sub collection links added in here Again, I'm not going to go into the entire detail of, of how we've done that, but uh, what it'll do in the section above the product grid, it'll just add these links in his anchor text and you'll see how that works once we've actually run this schedule. Okay, so now we have all our prompts organized and so it's going to now update these three sub collections at once. So we've named it, click proceed and we'll let that run. So now in our logs under tags, you can see these are also in progress as well. Okay, so the schedule has finished and now we're in the log for our rugs collection, our main rugs collection. You can obviously see our prompt logs here and you can see here it's completed all the sections. So the SEO title, we can see what it was and what it is now so the new content we have our h1 page title our seo description has been added in our collection description which is above the product grid has been added in and our content below the product grid and you can see it's got a h2 uh, subtitle or subheading and then that prompt actually adds in frequently asked questions as well so what we'll do we'll just go and actually have a look at it in the manual section and also look at it on the front end so this was our rugs collection and we'll go and open it up and we can see that this content was added below the product grid and then all the other all the other uh meta information will be within collections the uh, the actual collection within shopify you can see it's told us it's ai generated so now if we go and look at the actual collection itself on the front end, we can see the SEO title has been updated. The H1 has been updated. We have our description above the product grid has been added in. And if we scroll down, we also have our content below the product grid. And obviously, depending on your Shopify store, your layout, etc., you can adjust the prompts um, to suit your store with uh, bolding, um, any HTML elements you want, etc. You can tweak the prompts as needed. So the prompts we have in our prompt repository are what we use uh, regularly, um, but you can also, and we'll add it more in all the time, but you can also add yours as well. Okay, so now we'll go and look at the actual tags that have run through the schedule. If we go to our tag logs, and you can see here there are our three requested tags. We have our prompt product log here. And then you can see the three that have actually been updated. So these are all successful. So I won't go through all of them, but you can see the same process has been completed on these tag pages. So what we can do, if we go back to our main collection for rugs, you can see just our filter we use, we have our sub collections in, in the filter here. So if we click on turnout, it'll take us to our slash rugs slash turnout sub collection we've got our unique h1 our content above the product grid with all the links we've added in our seo title's been changed and we scroll down we can see our content below the product grid has also been added in and saved so then if we just click through to stable rugs and you can see it changes the url to stable uh, we've got the, the links in here again but unique content for this sub collection so we've by using OptiZen, we can create collections and sub collections. So to create that strong topical relevance between collections and sub collections and our silo architecture. Uh, we can do that and, and create unique content for all the uh, tag pages for those sub collections. But now we can also update using AI. So that's it for our recent releases with the OptiZen AI app. Um, we're now we have the, the tag and the collection AI functionality and just those other small updates I mentioned. Um, check it out if you're on the pro plan, uh, test it, use your own prompts, use prompts in the repository 
and just see uh, the power of using the AI features now. Uh, AI itself is becoming, um, you know, a daily use for many businesses, many e-com businesses, and we can leverage it even further uh, with OptiZen AI. Thanks. I'll talk to you later.